Hi everybody. Um, I hope you're all right. I've just realised I've been waffling on for 10 minutes talking to myself because I hadn't actually turned the camera on. Here I am. Um, hope you're all fine considering we're all back in lockdown again. Hopefully we'll be out for Christmas. Um, who knows? Who knows what Boris is doing? Bless him. Um, and thankfully, I, yesterday, we got a new president in the States. Common sense has prevailed, thank God. Anyway, there we are. Um, I haven't been here for a couple of weeks because I've been a little bit poorly. Um, it's autumn, isn't it? All the, all the normal bugs start flying about, let alone coronavirus. Um, so yeah, I must have picked up a bit, a bit of a bug, but I had a, a couple of um, symptoms, COVID type symptoms. So I thought, right, okay, be on the safe side, go and get a test. Um, fortunately, only had to travel 15 minutes from my house. Um, booked it and went uh, the same day, actually. Um, the, only, the only trouble is I have a very sensitive gag reflex. And um, the lady passed me through the, the slit in the window that you're allowed to leave open. She passed through the test. And then she moved off, but she was still stood quite near the car so she could see me. So I've got on my lap, I've got a little pink sandcastle bucket that I've had in the car since my daughter was little. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't car sick, but a couple of her friends one of them in particular, oh my God, it was like a whale every time she got in the car. We hadn't even moved anywhere, I hadn't turned the engine on. Um, so this is, it's still in the car, this bucket. So I've got this bucket on my knee. So I start, well, you have to get to the back of your throat. Well, I threw up. This woman's like, you all right? Yeah, fine, thanks. Um, so yeah, that wasn't very pleasant, but the results came back um, in about 48 hours clear thank god so that was fine so i got over my little bug went for a pneumonia jab last week um because i have asthma um i think anybody with an underlying health condition it's not cheap it's 70 pounds but if you can afford it i would say it's definitely worth <laughs> worth covering yourself um when you're over 65 it's free and you get immunized against 23 strains of um pneumonia under 65 you have to pay for it and you get you get covered against uh, 13 um strains of pneumonia so i think it is worth it yeah, it's a funny old thing being back in lockdown again, isn't it? Um, when Bojo announced it last Saturday, I was lucky I actually had my hair and my nails already booked in um, Monday, Tuesday. So it was like, yes. Um, so, yeah, we're not allowed out again. But hey-ho. Um, I have noticed, though, in the media, um, there has been a lot of talk of mental health problems going up and up um, and also very sadly the suicide rate um, which can only be attributed to what's been going on um, since March really you know um, it's really really sad um, but if we can say to people if you are feeling down, if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling anxious, and I'm saying this more to the men than women. I think women are much better at reaching out uh, when they have a problem. Um, men in particular, you know, keep things to themselves. And I just want to say, please don't, don't keep it to yourself. Um, you know, nobody's nobody's going to think any less of you if you reach out and ask for help. You're, you're still a man. You're still a manly man. 
um, it's just we all suffer at times you know the, the statistic that everybody knows one in four people at any one time in this country are suffering with mental health problems um, and you know if you if you can't reach if you feel that you can't reach out to friends or family um, or colleagues there are so many helplines that you can get in touch with um, I mean there's mind there's anxiety UK um, if you if you don't want to physically speak to somebody there is um, an incredible charity that I used to volunteer with um, called shout which is text based so basically you text the number and somebody like me um, will answer you virtually straight away um, and that person will listen to you through text um, they will signpost you so they will um, give you other charities that um, are maybe more specific to you like uh, if you're a young person um, or a child or a man um, you know the, there's so much help out there um, please don't be alone just you know reach out some somebody will take your hand if you just make that first effort and reach out and if anybody is feeling so desperate so desperate I would beg you to ring the Samaritans or ring 999 everybody is trained to help you everybody wants to help you so that's my little mental health chat for this week um obviously being in lockdown again we need to find things to do with ourselves and one thing that helps your mental health more than anything i think is um, being outside being in the daylight especially at this time of year because you know the daylight is starting to disappear that you know it's the clocks have just gone back so it is a bit lighter in the mornings but as the day wears on it is you know it's getting darker earlier and what have you um but just getting out for a walk is brilliant Good. um you know keep in touch with friends and family um via zoom and things like that so that you can actually you can actually see people um i think that's a, a big help um i've been doing my art boxes again um i keep every time there's a new one come out i keep ordering them and they've actually um art by box that i use um have released some smaller ones for christmas some smaller versions of the of the bigger boxes so they've got some that are, are 15 pounds i think it, are they 14.95 um you'll find on the website anyway and then some like stocking filler sized ones as well so if you go to their website create by box um you'll you'll see them so here's a little video of what i've been doing with the pastels this week this month's art by box has arrived and uh, with the weather outside it's uh, a good thing it has really absolutely awful so as I have said before these are the two ladies Tracy and Dina who put these boxes together both of them are art teachers every month you get a little present a little pin badge I've got a little apple this month and this month is based on the artist Matisse most the the boxes every month are, are themed so this month it's matisse and within the box we've got a pencil and paintbrush little handwritten enjoy your creative journey these are all handmade by the ladies as well the little gift tags uh, we have a set of gouache paints don't think i've ever used gouache before so I'm interested to see what those are like. Uh, so a glue stick. Anybody who's ever worked in a primary school like I have will be very familiar with glue sticks. 
um, a little passport which tells you about this month's um, creative journey. So it says, prepare to go on a journey inspired by the paper cutouts of the great master Henry Matisse. Now we've got some A6 cartridge paper and I don't know what that is for yet but I'm sure it will become apparent. We have I'm not sure maybe that's for cutting out your shapes on um, that's another piece of cartridge paper and then every every month you get um, a set of instructions um, and sort of uh, things to try out so you'll get some exercises first of all which um, will show you how best to use the materials, the art materials, the medium that comes that month. Um, and this month, as I say, it's, it's gouache um, is one of the things. So it just gives you little exercises to do, colour intensity exercises. Obviously you can dilute gouache. So then you see the example, you have a turn try it on some there's some more paper there and then there's a, a lesson every month there's a little lesson plan so you can go through and it gives you ideas of how to use the things that are in the box um, in what way so it gives you ideas for lots of little projects to do with the materials um, and there is some more sugar paper and some examples of Matisse's work. So I'll have a read through the instructions um, and then I'll film later when, uh, when I'm having a go myself. But yeah, another little monthly subscription box. Um, and you can get them for one person, two people, three people, a family of four. Um, you can either buy them on a one-off basis or you can buy them on a subscription basis, which is slightly cheaper. So that's it. It's called Art by Box. Okay. It was good fun that, um, probably those of you from hereabouts will recognise the Manchester Bee. The only thing it, that didn't come out, um, maybe because the light was so bright, was that um, the bees would be uh, black and yellow, which is the Manchester colours. So yeah, that was that. Was that. Um, this week's book, um, I love this woman. I'll, I love her. Um, I love watching her in The Vicar of Dibley. Um, I've loved watching her as a serious actress. Um, I loved her. Anything she does with Jennifer Saunders is fine in my book. Um, and I love her as an author. Dawn French, because of you, this is her latest novel. And there's very few physical books that I sort of buy these days. Um, but I always buy hers and buy them in hardback because I like to keep them. And I actually do read her books again. Um, she writes beautifully. Um, they're funny, but there's pathos as well in them. She just seems to get people. And... It's funny because, you know, normally if you 
if you read in a book written by somebody who's famous, um, been previously famous by something else, you know, especially if it's like an autobiography, you're reading it and in your, in your mind you've got their voice telling you the story. But I think this is a testament to Dawn French's ability to write that I don't physically hear her voice. I, I, I don't hear her voice in my head when I'm reading the book because the characters are so strong. They have their own voices um, and their own physicality, you know, and it, it's, I forget that I'm reading a book written by Dawn French, which, um, you know, to me is a compliment, it's not an insult at all. And all her characters are so beautifully observed and all the little nuances and everything is just the detail. Um, it's just fabulous. So this latest one, I mean, every every book she's written, um, sort of fiction book, has been completely different. Um, you, you couldn't really sort of um, pigeonhole her, you know, into one particular theme. So this one is about the old millennium turns into the new. In the same hospital, two very different women give birth to two very similar daughters. Hope leaves with a beautiful baby girl and Anna leaves with empty arms. 17 years later, the gods who keep watch over broken-hearted mothers wreak mighty revenge and the truth starts rolling, terrible and deep, towards them all. The power of mother love will be tested to its limits, perhaps beyond. Now, I'm halfway through this book and I just, I've not been able to put it down. It's it's really, really good read. I would thoroughly recommend this and speaking of Dawn French um, a book that she has written has to be on my all-time favorite book list um, you know if I ever went on desert island discs I'd be asking to take this as a luxury I think and it's actually Dawn French's autobiography uh, Dear Fatty um, Fatty is what she calls Jennifer Saunders. Um, it is the most beautiful, beautiful autobiography I have ever read. She writes, it's been out a few years now, um, but she writes it as a series of letters. Um, and she writes them to the important people in her life. Um, like Jennifer Saunders, obviously Jennifer's letter starts Dear Fatty. Um, she writes to her uh, adopted daughter, Billy's mother, um, the most heartfelt, heart-wrenching letter of thanks to this lady who was Billy's birth mother. Um, I cried. Um, when particularly when I read the letter to her dad um, her dad like my mum took his own life um, and it was it's just heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking um, but there are some incredibly funny letters as well um, the whole the whole book is a roller coaster of emotion um, if you read it um, and I would, I would, honestly, I'd so recommend it. Um, I'd read it with a box of tissues um, because you will cry laughing and you will cry, cry as well. So anything by Dawn French is, is okay by me, um, particularly The Vicar of Dibley. <laughs> it's my favourite programme. I've got all of them. Um, I love it. I just think she's just a brilliant actress. So, yeah, that's my book this week, or my books. Uh, Dawn French, Because of You, and as an aside, Dawn French, Dear Fatty, her autobiography. Um, Telly-wise, um, tonight starts the new series um, of his dark materials, Philip Pullman. Um, I never read the books sort of because they they came out you know I don't know I don't know how long the books have been out say 
20 years or something you know i was already an adult um and the the more sort of uh, young pe person fiction but having said that i know a lot of adults who have read them um it's like me uh with harry potter when when they started coming out my daughter was little um and because i bought them for her i started reading them i think a lot of people have done the same with the with the trilogy of books in this series um it starts tonight at nine o'clock on bbc one is it nine o'clock um and it's just brilliant it's a brilliant brilliant cast um the girl who plays the lead character lyra is played by daphne Keane. and she's a relative newcomer brilliant fabulous actress her dad is actually in it he plays uh father mcphail so i didn't realize that they were related until i was just doing a little bit of research for this um her on-screen buddy is will played by amir wilson who is a fabulous actor um and he's actually which i'm dying to see he's actually in the latest screen adaptation of the secret garden which was one of my favorite books when i was little um and he plays dickon the little lad that lives out on the moors uh, another big name in it is Lynn manuel Miranda, um, probably best known as the writer um, and a performer in the stage show Hamilton. Um, he's a fantastic actor. Uh, you'll also have seen him in uh, Mary Poppins, the latest feature film. Um, he's brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to that tonight. I'm going to hunker down with a cup of tea and a piece of cake um, and watch watch that. So that's the TV for this week um the garden is coming along well it's drowned a bit actually it is coming along unfortunately to stop raining now um some of the plants i put in have drowned but anyway let's go and take a okay, look so this week's garden update We've still got broccoli coming what's oh, exciting I don't know if anything eats broccoli at this time of year, bug-wise, but anyway. So, today's job is all these shrubs and plants to go in the beds. These little violas and pansies I'm going to put into the, um, into the pots because those uh, little blue ones are getting very leggy now. I think my, uh, I don't think my geraniums will last much longer. So yeah, look at this one as well. This is absolutely glorious. The berries are so bright on it. It's a skimmia, skimmia obsession it's called. And when I read up on them, they need, um, to ensure they get the berries, they need a male, and this must be a female plant, they need a male plant nearby. So I've had to go out and buy two skimmier rubellas so that, um, I suppose with the, with the bees and what have you, they'll cross pollinate the one with the red berries on. So that's that. Um, some of the plants came from a local nursery, in fact most of the plants came from a local nursery um, which is so reasonable and it's a little local business and I like to support them <clears throat> but I had a delivery yesterday from Marshalls online and I ordered um, some hostas bearing in mind from the tracking They'd only been in transit 24 hours before they arrived. Look at the state of that. I'm really annoyed. Because they, you know, they're not cheap. I don't know whether this one may possibly survive. And also, the, um, the delivery was missing. I ordered a Mahonia, which is this. Well, I ordered two Mahonias, which is this spiky plant. Um, and the delivery notice said there was two in the box. Well, there's definitely not, there's one. So I'm a bit annoyed with Marshalls, really. Anyway, 
<clears throat> we need to get all those in and the beds are looking better. Obviously everything's dying back now. But um, we're getting there. That's most of the new plants in. Still got to sort out the uh, violas and the pansies and that pachysandra that might have to go in a pot because I think these beds for the time being are full enough but um, just look at that glorious skimmy obsession it's amazing so yep I've got most of them in for the time being there's a couple more supposed to arrive in the post and obviously I need my missing Mahonia um, but we are definitely getting there. Looking all right, isn't it? So let me know what you'll be doing uh, with yourselves this lockdown. Are you are you still working? Are you a key worker? Um, you know, are you at home? Obviously the kids are still at school, so it's not gonna be exactly the same as last time. Uh, just to let you know, there is a recipe vlog um, gonna go up in a couple of days. Uh, maybe even tomorrow it depends how long it takes me it's it's it takes ages to download these videos I've got to edit them and then download them and then upload them to YouTube so it takes a while um, but in the next couple of days anyway there'll, there'll be a new recipe and this week's recipe is pea and ham soup absolutely love it so don't forget like and subscribe um you can click to like you can click the there's like a little thumbs up icon underneath um and subscribe there is it's where it says uh, red subscribe that will be great and i will see you soon take care of yourselves bye bye